welcome our guest from Tijuana. I'll be introducing a professor from the Department of Philosophy, Felipe Lee. He was born in Merida in Yucatan, Mexico in 1965, and he's a full-time professor at the School of the Humanities at the OABC, the Tijuana campus, an institution at which he's been teaching since 1992. His BA is in philosophy. He got it from the UNIVA in Guadalajara. His master's degree is in education, which he got at the Ibero in Tijuana, and his PhD is in philosophy from the UNAM in Mexico City. He teaches contemporary continental philosophy, Eastern philosophy, and seminars on Nietzsche and Heidegger. He's published academic articles on hedonism, ethics, and the concept of community. He is currently the chair of the philosophy program at the OABC, Welcome, Felipe. Good evening to all of you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, in this gathering of because we share uh, a common interest in, may I say, uh, mental emancipation. And I'm gra grateful for the invitation from Professor Emily. And the ideas that I want to submit to your consideration this evening uh, concern the belief in reincarnation. And I'm going to, to explain to you uh, an interpretation of what does it mean to reincarnate, a philosophical interpretation. Uh, this is a work in progress. Uh, I just started to write this uh, from the invitation uh, from Professor Emily. So this is a, a rough draft of uh, a work that I that I want to keep uh, polishing. And maybe there's going to be an, in the future an opportunity to, to come back again and another reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to, to say to you is uh, Oh, by the way, uh, I realized that this is my first time that I present my ideas outside Mexico. <laughs> outside my country and without my native language, which is Spanish. So, uh, yes, this is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time because I don't remember being here <laughs> <laughs> in past reincarnation. <laughs> and that's a problem that I'm going to address. The problem of not remembering <laughs> your own incarnations. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, read you some uh, some of the paragraph that I wrote for this occasion, and uh, my interpretation is based upon uh, three concepts: existence. Entropy and repetition. Using those three concepts, I make a, a philosophical interpretation of the meaning of reincarnation. So, in popular culture, reincarnation is conceived as some kind of journey or tour de force 
which an entity the soul takes in order to purify itself and advance to higher degrees of consciousness. For ancient people, it was sufficient proof of reincarnation to observe the cycles of death and rebirth in nature, i.e. Uh, spring to winter, winter to spring. It may be more exciting, it may be closer to people's heart and mind, and this is no minor issue, and it may be more beautiful, but the common understanding of reincarnation takes on a new meaning under the light of philosophical interpretation. In what follows, I treat reincarnation as a symbol which I aim to translate into a philosophical argument based upon the three concepts that I just told you about. So I will begin with the first concept, existence, then I will go on with the second concept, which is entropy, and finally, repetition. And that's it. We are all going to win, <laughs> So, existence. In order to understand the concept of existence, we can begin by looking at the clues contained in the word itself, which come from the Latin prefix ex, meaning a movement from the inside to the outside, like an outburst. And uh, a verb, sistere, to sustain, to preserve standing outside. Right from the beginning, these notions transmit a sense of movement and tension. Right? Imagine consciousness or being as a, as a flat surface, like a resting pond or a still lake. Existence is like a little wave coming up from the surface of the water. Existence is a bump, a protuberance standing out from the surface of consciousness or being. Humans are vertical animals amongst a majority of horizontal ones. Christ was horizontal when he was being nailed to the cross. Then he was raised and became vertical for all the people to see. It can then be said that at that moment, the moment of death, he came into existence. Yes? So Christ, the Christ began to exist when he was raised on the cross. You see, it's very easy, it is. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense being used here, existence does not indicate that something is really there, but rather how it, it, it is there. The concept was designed to point out the peculiarity of a human individual standing alone and exposed above the horizon. This is the sense in which Heidegger uses the word. I think that ancient wise men perceived the same disposition and named it original sin. Also, the first Greek philosophers were aware of this configuration, as we can see in Anaximander's which is an a ancient Greek philosopher, presocratic Greek philosopher. Uh, we have no, 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 uh, no books of Anaximander. Everything is lost. 
lost, <laughs> except for the fragment that I'm going to read. When things have their origin, there they must also pass away according to necessity, for they must pay penalty and be judged for their injustice according to the ordinance of time. That's everything we have left from Anaximander. <laughs> and I think that also the concept of karma and guilt are closely related, related to the same lump that we call existence. Surely this prompts the question of how this lump came to be in order not to fall back into an infinite regress and thus remain unsatisfied, we must be aware of the circular nature of the matter at hand. Circularity already present in the meaning of samsara. You see, there is no, uh, in the, in Sanskrit, they don't, obviously, they don't use the word reincarnation. Uh, reincarnation is a, a very bad translation of samsara, which is a Sanskrit word that indicates the cycle of death and rebirth. So, no reincarnation in the philosophy. Samsara. Uh, we are accustomed, uh, samsara, the Sanskrit word that we are accustomed to translate as reincarnation, but whose real meaning refers to the endless cycle of life and death. Uh, so the argument is circular, not by defect, but because it is trying to mirror the circularity of reality. In lines above, I made a reference to the original sin. A clarification is needed. By referring to the religious doctrine of the original sin, I don't intend to cast a dark shadow over existence. And I am not subscribing to the idea that life is a punishment that may be followed by another harsher punishment depending on how obedient we are to God's commandments. Rather, I understand the notion of original sin as a symbol of the concept of existence. Neither am I proclaiming some sort of epistemic superiority of reason over myth. For my experience is that A, myth and interpretation are at the same level, and B, the more one advances in the interpretation of a myth, the more this very exercise becomes another myth. So that's the, the end of my brief uh, explanation of the first concept which is existence so now I go on to the second concept which is entropy there is an old saying nature abhors uh, abhors a vacuum it was meant to explain why fluid seems to expand and occupy all the available space. Likewise, we can say that nature abhors uneven surfaces. Uneven surfaces. This is not only a metaphor or a mere wordplay. Science itself can help us understand this. According to the second law of thermodynamics, Whenever there is a difference of temperature between two adjacent bodies, heat always travels from the hotter one to the colder until an equilibrium or equalization is reached. That's the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, if I enter this room with a hot cup of coffee, 
what is going to happen? It's gonna get cold. It's, it's getting equal from the temperature of the room, room temperature. No, that's the second law. So, uh, so you see, the universe tends to resolve any unevenness. It wants to rest in peace the state called entropy. It wants to recuperate the original stillness, the primordial calm surface about which the Spirit of God hover, as the Bible says. If we apply the law of entropy to the understanding of existence, it comes, it comes out that this protuberance, this so dear bump existence, has a tendency to return, to consume itself or to flatten. A little swelling from a mosquito bite takes time to go away. Imagine the time it will take before a mountain gets flattened by the wind and the rain without human intervention. And so existence, our little personal lump, takes time to resolve. Each day, each minute, each second, the tension of our perpendicular existence relaxes more and more. The ancient sages knew that the cases of instantaneous resolution of the enigma of existence were very rare. It, it takes time to flatten existence. So that was the second concept. Thermodynamics related to reincarnation. So I will finish now with the uh, third and final concept, which is repetition. Reincarnation is here understood as the time spent in achieving existence entropy. That's it, very simple. <laughs> The distance between existence and the world is in itself the very emergence of a space-time dimension. As nature abhors vacuum, existence also tends to fill the gap originated between itself and the world. But existence can only fill the void by repeating itself infinitely. Oh, what a coincidence. What I'm saying is being right now, graphically showing to you in that image. <laughs> fractal. I'm talking about fractal. This was not planned. <laughs> Reincarnation is another name for fractal. Uh, hence the notion of reincarnation as repetition. So reincarnation is just a symbol or an image that seeks to represent the necessity necessity to mark with our presence all the space between us and the world. Repetition is the action of going through or traveling the space or dimension between existence and being, or the pacification of the original tension of existence. Observe the presence of repetition in our daily lives. By repeating those same steps, we cover the distance to reach our destination. We repeat the same exercise until we master a sport. In the case of a physical ailment, we apply time and again the balm that is going to cure us. And foremost, when a conflict arises in our soul, for instance, an abnormal fear of dogs, 
We keep producing the dog many times in our nightmares. How violent an event must have originated existence, our own private Big Bang, that ancient cultures produce the symbol of reincarnation, which is the repetition that help us assimilate the trauma of birth. And that's it. Three concepts. Finally, I would like to address two questions. Aside from legends themselves in need of interpretation, no one remembers their own past reincarnations. So reincarnation without remembrance can be the very definition of mortality. I can only answer one thing to this. Our body remembers everything that it was before becoming a human body. This can be seen clearly in the stages from embryo to baby. So, no, there is no remembrance in the sense ask, but there is a sense in which reincarnation functions like some sort of material memory. And the second question, our own sense of individuality and identity is tied to our sense of mortality. It seems that individuality is incompatible with reincarnation. Death remains unconquered. Without a leap of faith, is there a passage from our modern consciousness of death to the consciousness of reincarnation? My answer, if there is such a passage, I am yet to find it. All I can say is that reincarnation, rather than being a way out of the anguish of death, it's an affirmation of the will to live and to find fulfillment of our deepest desires. Uh, it's related to a, an exalted feeling a notion, a slight suspicion that I am present in all the beings that I see the same way as they are present in me. That's reincarnation. So all our reincarnations are happening right now. There is no time spent in reincarnation. By the look on your face, <laughs> I can say that this is very clear. <laughs> and I will send you back to your respective houses with a clear understanding. <laughs> uh, I'm joking, my friends, but this is my, uh, this is what I want to submit to your consideration, and I don't know, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> We could we could open it up for a, a brief question and answer if you'd like. Of course. All right. Any anyone uh, uh, would like to ask a question? Uh, you, you in the back, and then and then you. Okay. Por favor. Yeah. <laughs> Mira, in, uh, each text 
ancient text from which the idea of reincarnation uh, emerges can be read to waste. Exoteric and esoteric. It's like the Bible. Uh, I don't know if the Bible uh, uh, speaks about reincarnation. Sorry. I haven't read my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Only the New Testament. Uh, uh, I think that the, uh, the Jewish people believe in reincarnation. Uh, at least there is a, uh, a group of, of the Jewish people that uh, believes in reincarnation. So, each text can be seen as religion, that's the exoteric meaning. And as philosophy, that's the esoteric meaning. O sea, un texto tiene dos maneras de leerse. Tiene un significado exotérico, significa, es un poco despectivo el término, significa que es la manera como masiva o social o popular de leerse. Entonces, si tú entiendes reencarnación como que tu alma se va a salir de tu cuerpo y vas a viajar, eso es el significado exotérico, popular, como dije yo al principio. Pero hay un significado esotérico o filosófico, que es cuando pues, le buscas tres pies al gato y quieres... <risa> uh, you, search, you search for the three feet of the cat. <risa> no, sorry, I, uh, there's a saying in Spanish, ¿no? Le buscas tres pies al gato. <risa> But I don't know the equivalent in English. <laughs> uh, so, if you are asking me, well, reincarnation is a philosophy or what, a religion? It's both. Obviously, uh, many, for many people, it's a religion. Like the resurrection of Christ is a religion for all the Christian people. But also the, res the resurrection of Christ can be interpreted in philosophical terms. Si tienes tiempo de leer un filósofo, bien facilito de leer. Hegel. <laughs> Mira, Hegel es un filósofo que toma todos los dogmas cristianos como la resurrección de Cristo. Y te dice qué significan filosóficamente, porque ese es su trabajo del filósofo, meterse en problemas y buscarle tres pies al gato. Luego por eso los andan persiguiendo y los andan corriendo porque empiezan a cambiar el sentido. So, if you read a German philosopher named Hegel, you will find that he makes an interpretation of Christ in philosophical terms. So, if you are a Christian, Christ is our Lord Savior. And if you are Hegel, Christ is another thing. From the same text, two interpretations, philosophical and religious. Yeah. Can you believe yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> In Mexico? There is no money. We are poor. But there is enough money to pay me to do this. So you're rich in culture? Yeah. Culture. Um. Riches. <laughs> um. So you said that uh, reincarnation is evident when um, through uh, through childbirth, when the when it's like infant status. I um, 
uh, the way I interpreted it was that it's like when a child's awkward and it's movements, is that what you were meaning? Or I don't know if I was alluding no, to something else. No, uh, because uh, in biology, uh, when, when you uh, study the evolution or metamorphosis or transformation from the moment of fecundation, I don't know if that's the correct word. I'm going to say up for some of you in English, ontology recapitulates phylogeny. Does anybody remember that from biology? And some scientists, <laughs> no? Okay, some scientists argue about exactly how that works, but Manuel de Landa has written about this in a critique of essentialism. It's the idea that it's not evolution <coughs> that's moving us forward, that it's a, a biology, chemistry, that it, complexity science argues that it's this other way that we're advancing. If you, uh, thank you, Emily. <laughs> uh, professor, thank you for the, for the clarification of the concept. So if you see images of uh, <coughs> embryo, uh, it is said that an embryo uh, passes through or transforms itself from, like from fish, reptile. No? Who's heard of this before? Yeah. Mama. Remember that? Okay, that's what we're talking about. So, so it's like, like, uh, like I said, that matter, uh, the matter is is remembering all all the the history of the species, the evolution of species mm -hmm. in, a, in, in nine months, mm -hmm. comprised in nine months. Mm -hmm. So first month, maybe we are reptiles. <laughs> uh, second month, we are fish. Third month, we are whatever you wish. <laughs> 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 You don't need to be. You're already. <laughs> yeah, <that's nice. laughs> you are not going, you are coming back. So that, it was only, I don't know, uh, uh, an image, a uh, uh, scientific example, not to, to, uh, to give a uh, sustenance to my lies. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned Alexander, right? In your, in uh, uh, he was part of the Ionic school, correct? In Greek yeah. philosophy, yeah. 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 My yeah. students, yeah. Anaximandro era yeah. 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 yeah, okay, so they kind of believed that water was the basis for everything. Yes. Correct? Okay. So uh, that made me think about um, the Epic of Gilgamesh and how they talk about the lotus flower coming out of the water and everything yeah, like that. Uh, now, can you speak on the lotus flower and Eastern philosophy at all and what its uh, significance is to reincarnation? Yes. Uh, well, uh, the lotus flower is a, a very popular symbol from uh, Eastern philosophy, you know, mm -hmm. Hindu philosophy. Uh, the meaning of the uh, lotus flower the meaning that I can uh, share with you at this moment is very simple. They say that the, the lotus flower uh, begins or takes root or it is born from mouth, the bottom, the muddy bottom, the muddy waters. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not, not the singer. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Body water. So, and then it rises to the surface of the pond and blossoms in the, above the surface. So the, the Hindu people, they say, oh, look at this. Here's a clear image of the, the evolution of consciousness, or yes, a math, math is ignorance. So you begin with ignorance and you reach the light. That's a very simple image. But uh, here, a uh, LA guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Los Ángeles. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that Los Ángeles belongs to us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so what's the relation of the lotus flower with reincarnation? It's very simple. You have it in front of you and, you, and you don't see it. And you're from LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't suppose that the LA people are intelligent? Yeah. Okay. So? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Tell me not in your leg. Yeah. Let me say it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the lotus flower. Come on, my friend. No, 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 this, no, no, this, no, no. When you see a, a lotus flower or many kinds of flowers, what you see? A repetition of the same pattern. Flat, 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 flat. A fractal. A lotus flower is a fractal. Yes? You don't need cannabis to understand this. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah. Read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. Reincarnation, lotus flower. Where's the connection? Fractal. What is a fractal? A pattern, a pattern, a repetition in nature. Golden ratio. Yes, all around us, there's uh, uh, fractals. Flowers are fractals. Uh, snail, el caracol, amiga, el caracol. The spiral, la espiral del caracol. The spiral, snail, spiral is a fractal. And that's reincarnation, the repetition of a pattern. Okay? Tell that to the LA people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, then uh, Dr. Hey, Hicks. You, okay, in the, in the back. Bueno, no sé, esta pregunta creo que se enfoca más en la cultura, pero usted viene de un país donde la mayoría de la población es católica. Proudly agree. Se me hace interesante como nuestros ancestros no creían en eso todavía y cómo evolucionó eso por el no sé es bueno, esto, no sé, yo se me fue la onda. Mira, es muy sencillo. She's asking, she's uh, exposing me as a Catholic. Okay? <laughs> Basically, is what, is what... No, she's telling me, oh, you come from a country with a Catholic tradition. And I think that she wants to, to ask me, uh, Catholics don't have a reincarnation appreciation you know? <laughs> but what she doesn't know is that there is in the popular beliefs of Mexicans of Catholic Mexicans, popular beliefs, which are maybe mixed with the indigenous beliefs. There's an old saying in Mexico, hay un refrán en Mexico, un dicho, in Michoacán, Mexico. Michoacán, se sabe de que estoy hablando. Carnitas Europa, ¿no? <laughs> well, there's an old saying in Mexico. 
hay un dicho mexicano, fíjate bien, hay un dicho mexicano que expresa lo siguiente. Dice nomás así, cuando te mueras vas a ir a recoger tus pasos. Es a beautiful saying uh, which uh, encloses uh, great wisdom. I would say it uh, in English, uh, literal, literally. Uh, in the people in Michoacán, Mexico, it's a state uh, in Mexico, the central part of Mexico, they say, oh, when you die, you are going to recoger, pick up. Pick up. to pick up your steps. Mm -hmm. No, life is walking. And when you die, you pick up your steps. They say, they say, all Mexicans say, <laughs> That's reincarnation. So, the belief in reincarnation is hidden in some sayings. So, everything is mixed. This reincarnation is finished. <laughs> All right. Hey. Oh, it's me.